so let's start. Uh, guys, so thanks uh, a lot for uh, joining us today. This is the third episode of my Bulletproof CTO uh, webinar series. Uh, this one was especially tough for me to put together. I mean, I, I was changing the, uh, the date a few times and Gilles know that uh, uh, there was a holiday season and, and a few bumps in the road, but finally we made it. Uh, and I'm especially happy that today would be a, a webinar where we will have kind of two perspectives on the marketplaces. So one from Oscar, uh, who is a CTO and co-founder of, of Free Spaces. Uh, the guys are still early on their journey with marketplaces. And from the other uh, side, there's Vilius from CG Trader, uh, who is already well-established scale up uh, in the marketplace sphere. So I hope you will like uh, what we are going to discuss here today. Uh, just uh, I will let uh, the guys introduce themselves in, in a moment. Uh, so I am again really, really glad that they they have found the time today and, and, and made it. So uh, thank you again, guys. Uh, as always, I say that, you know, the, my webinars are kind of sponsored by LinkedIn because I never, ever had the chance to meet my speakers face to face. Uh, but anyway, if I'm in Vilnius or Stockholm, uh, you know, the beers are on me. So, so thanks again. Um, and uh, today I have kind of thought how to name this, you know, um, catchy phrase at the beginning. So I, I came up with something like uh, connecting people in good old Nokia style. So this is what marketplaces for me are, are, are about, connecting those two sides of supply and demand and making it convenient. Uh, and this is how I understand marketplaces primarily. So I will let uh, now uh, guys introduce themselves uh, shortly and then uh, let's move on to the uh, intro and the uh, questions that we have uh, prepared for today. So let's start from the videos. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Vilus, as uh, Kamil mentioned, CTO at CG Trader. So um, um, the company who doesn't know the CG Trader is a marketplace for the uh, 3D content, but basically, I, sometimes I call it right now we are products company. So the first one was the marketplace we started with. Uh, the the product started the startup. Uh, but now we kind of focusing on, on two products. The second one is uh, somehow related to the 3D. So we, we have a vision to replace uh, photography with uh, 3D content or computer graphics for the e-commerce. So it's a new challenges, uh, but still today's topic is the marketplaces. So um, what else about the company? So um, we are global company, globally hiring companies. So right now, we are 130 people working in the company and in the product engineering department there are 41 head i think so probably that's the short intro oscar yeah hello my name is uh, oscar and i'm the cto uh, of respaces so also co-founder and the respaces is a marketplace connecting uh, workspaces with workers who need somewhere to, to work for the day. So basically on-demand workspaces. Uh, and we were founded about 15 months ago. Uh, and uh, during the whole pandemic where we saw that like this need for more flexibility in the workplace were growing. Uh, and we are only two people in our tech team. And then we have, actually we are free, we have one consultant and when we're using some offshoring. And so we're quite early and we're trying to work like really with a small agile team and do as much as we can with little resources. Perfect. Uh, guys, so thank you for the quick intro. Uh, I will move on to the uh, my part of introduction. Uh, that will take uh, maybe three minutes stop. And then we'll move on to the uh, questions part. Uh, so preparing for this webinar, I actually want to refer to this uh, Deloitte uh, Fast 50 ranking that uh, Deloitte is putting together uh, every year. Uh, I guess it's going to be uh, end of 
December, the next one. So uh, in the last ranking from covering 2020, uh, the interesting thing was that top three companies with the highest uh, growth metrics were marketplaces. So they were Backhelp, based uh, in Poland, uh, uh, Dudu and uh, Ulof Domov, both from, from uh, Czech Republic. Uh, to Backhelp, I will refer a little bit more uh, later on in our question number three, because there, there is some kind of relation to, to what I wanted to, to say uh, about Backhelp. Uh, and just for you to give you a further perspective, um, these are the top marketplace success factors uh, according to Market Fund Capital, which is also a, a, a Poland-based uh, VC, highly involved in, in investing in, in marketplace projects. So, hello guys, and thank you for the resources. I will also tag you uh, uh, later on in, for, for being my, my inspiration here. So there are uh, 10 um, factors that are very, very, important for, for uh, VCs who are looking to invest into uh, market with projects. So just going very quickly, uh, there are uh, economic advantage, market size, and network effects, frequency, loyalty structure, market fragmentation, uh, also a question of uh, supply defensibility. So maybe a, a bit related to, to what uh, Bill is for dimension of kind of transferring from marketplace towards building your own product kind of supply your clients with more and more uh, upselling services that you can offer. Uh, there are uh, growth channels, payment slash take rate, and A to Z solution. And A to Z solution is also understood as once you're starting with your marketplace, it is crucial for you to have A to Z solution to at least one side of your marketplace, whether it's sell side or buy side. So this is something that uh, at least uh, VCs um, who are active into uh, in investing into marketplaces are putting it um, as important. And I guess we are going to discuss a bit of it today, um, kind of rela uh, in relation to, to the uh, uh, maybe engineering part of the solution, uh, which is a marketplace. Uh, also, a very quick shot on top uh, European uh, investors into marketplace projects and VCs in Europe. So I just want to, to, to focus now on, on the European, uh, let's say, territory. So we are, are having the, the perspective. So uh, all those um, all those uh, investors I will also list in my resources. So you guys have the uh, source on uh, to my research. But they are uh, 0.1 capital from Germany, peak capital from Netherlands, uh, Python capital from UK, market one capital, or I already mentioned from Poland. So, hello guys. Speed Invest X from Austria, uh, Soba VC from UK, uh, Adevinta Ventures from Norway, Balderton Capital from UK, Magical Capital from Israel, and Samai Pata from Spain. Uh, this is very, very sub sub subjective, but uh, the, according to the research, those are investors who are. Okay, let's let's call it specialized and a focus on marketplace projects. So this is their core business, uh, and and marketplaces are not just one of the projects that they are investing in. So from 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 those uh, investment houses, you can definitely expect uh, a lot of guidance, support, and anything that you will need uh, on your way uh, to be be successful with the marketplaces. So the so so called smart money, uh, at least that's that's a, that's a popular phrase. Um, and smoothly moving on to the uh, question number one uh, that we will start here from uh, from Vilios. Uh, there is a, a also a short graphic. Thanks, uh, Market One Capital, for inspiration again. Uh, so the question number one is market challenges and opportunities in building successful marketplace projects so of course there are there are two sides this business side and the, the technical uh, the technical side but of course the supply and demand have to be in balance in order to marketplace to succeed so uh, uh, I will be passing the floor to 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 Vilius to um, elaborate on that you know particular CG trader story 
Uh, and now I am muting myself. Okay, thank you, Camille. So, uh, so as usually, I um, I'm most interested in the challenges. So my key points will be regarding the challenges. So uh, I think the the biggest one for the uh, for the marketplace places uh, from the technical and the business size side is uh, uh, chicken and the egg problem or the supply and demand. How to balance those? So uh, I think uh, it took us uh, more than a few years to get attraction, maybe four, three, four years to get the traction. Like you have enough supply and enough demand just to focus on, on, on features, on the, on the products, on scalability and the performance. So uh, like a key one challenge is this chicken and, and the egg problem. And uh, what, what it means for the product or the engineering is that uh, one week you have to work on features uh, which will help to onboard the suppliers and another week you have to switch focus to the demand side and it's just never ending like a uh, never ending process uh, so i think that uh, it is the same for the product engineering and for for the business as well so uh, maybe the the good advice uh, uh, which actually uh, colleague shared today so it's uh, like you have to if you want to kind of help yourself you need to find big uh, customers or the big uh, suppliers so you could focus uh, for a while on other side instead of uh, working on two sides so this is uh, key, key, uh, key challenge what i see um, the next one is uh, like for every business, but uh, of course uh, for the marketplaces as well. You need to you, you need to know your your market. You know you need to know the trends, uh, the products in the market, and ideally you should be from the market. So uh, as uh, from the market itself. So uh, in our case, uh, uh, one of our co-founders. Uh, is a, was a designer himself, so it was it it was obvious uh, for him what's wrong in the in the market. What are the um, what what are the key bottlenecks or disadvantages on or, uh, in other platforms in other marketplaces? So we kind of started in the existing market. We uh, we 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 saw how um, our competitors are. Uh, um what they doing wrong so we had this like uh, because we were small we had this ability to to move fast uh focus on on disadvantages maybe in other platforms and deliver value to the to the designers we started i think with a supply side because like our founder was a uh, designer and he he knew what's uh, what's wrong with the competitors so, uh, but then anyway, so knowing your market is, uh, is a must. Uh, otherwise you will be just building something you, you, you not uh, know about. Uh, and maybe the last uh, before uh, uh, moving the mic to the Oscar is the focus. And it, it kind of contradicts the chicken and the egg problem. So it's everything about the balance. Uh, in this like supply demand and in the focusing or just making tons of features so uh because like um and we did this mistake uh, multiple times so when you uh, you need to grow both sides and you start experimenting you're creating features which uh, which uh, works uh, for a while and and the end you end up with um uh, let's say uh not a hundred, but like uh, 50 features, which are unique. You need to maintain those. And at that point, the marketplace please gets traction and you need to solve the performance, the uh, scalability issues. But at the same time, you have multiple features. So uh, my advice would be just like a, a test and kill it if it doesn't work. Otherwise you will end up with uh, like 
tens of different products on the same umbrella. Um, yeah, so probably that's um, that's for the start. Maybe let's make maybe a live discussion between me and Oscar. So over to you, Oscar. So I, I will just add Vilius that to this question of uh, smart engineering or not over engineering at the very beginning. I will relate in the question number three, which will be kind of uh, focus on you know shipping the product to the market, whether it's custom built or using any other other uh, platforms available out there, uh, and how to how not to over engineer when you actually you know, there, there's a saying that you want a beautiful baby but you actually need a, a, an ugly baby right so this is what you need uh, so let's uh, pass the floor to Oscar. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, so just to give some further background to, to the challenges we've had. So it, like, we started out with this idea that we saw so much unused space in the city, like super expensive space where the rents are high, but it's all, always empty. And we saw and knew a lot of freelancers and they, like startups who had no place to work because it's too expensive. And we thought that we must be able to connect these. And that's where our marketplace was kind of born. And of course, a lot has happened. And now we're onboarding more and more like co-working spaces. In the beginning, it was more hotels who were struggling, especially during the pandemic, to fill out their spaces. And they said that, okay, here's an opportunity to, to get the new kind of people into our spaces. And now it's more traditional co-working uh, but many types of spaces really and so for us we've also or we're still like challenging this uh, the hen and the egg as you you say it and we began definitely with the supply side we said that no one like the value we build with the marketplace is this network of a lot of supply to choose from so we need to build quite a lot of supply before we can bring in the consumers to book this and but technically on the technical side we actually did the opposite because even a lot of supply for us in one city is kind of manageable so we have been helping the supply side like manually like with filling in everything they need to do to add a listing to our marketplace while on the consumer side the bookings need to be really smooth because they will never have someone from our team beside them to guide them through the process. So, um, yeah, so basically now we will start a project to take care of the demand side more with the technical issues. And until now, we've done a lot of manual work and been focusing on, uh, on the buyer side. Uh, so it's it's quite interesting how yeah how to how to focus these things, um, and we've also decided to start very local because we're like uh, people are renting out physical objects on uh, our site. So to be able to get this network effect of like a good supply that can really give the the this like uh, the users what they need we need uh, a certain density of the supply so we have really focused especially on stockholm where we're located and then on sweden before uh, like our dream is of course to go overall in the world but we're really focusing to nail it locally and then start to to grow from there uh, yeah and the, the opportunity for a marketplace like ours, like the challenge, one of the challenge, challenges like commercial is to, to show that we bring a value to both sides, as you were talking about, Camel. Like for the, for the buyers, the people who are looking for flexible workspaces, like two days a week, I don't want to have to commute into our office, but I still want a good place to work. I like we have a good prop proposition for them like go in here find a workspace book it and go there and work but for the co-working spaces for example 
And many of those then want to have build their own community. Like, so they really want people to have this monthly uh, occurring revenue from them and having them always come there and build the community. And we're telling them that, yeah, we want people to come just over the day. And that has been a, 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 like a difficulty in the beginning. And now we're just building and in, like launching a more business to business solution so that we can have large companies coming with like the hundreds of employees and they want to offer workspaces for all of them. And then it's of course easier to come to suppliers as well saying like, we have these customers, they are looking for somewhere to work. Then you like, when you have that kind of uh, <laughs> user base, then you, of course you can also get the supply like saying that we make all of this available to you. Uh, these guys uh, are 100 employees, so they don't want to sign up to one co-working space because they want to use different ones. But uh, if we onboard to our platform, you will be able to, uh, yeah, to have these guys come and book with you as well. Yeah, very interesting. It it kind of reminds me early days at the company. So I just wanted to reflect on uh, what you said about uh, manually helping the suppliers. Uh, we did the same, uh, and it 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 was having the product and the engineering because like uh, we we somehow have to like convince the des designers to like transfer they're like all the stores to the our marketplace so it, but they are they, they feel uncomfortable selling uh, elsewhere so we the first we have to convince about uh, like uh, like your conditions about uh, royalty rates and later on okay what's next uh, the the seller has let's say a few a few thousand models somewhere so we need to we we actually built uh, many tools for intake just to, just to like speed up that process. And yeah. So I was, interesting. I was just shortly referring to this supply versus demand uh, part. Uh, so um, this motivation of VCs and, and investors to invest into marketplaces uh, is this sweet spot. Uh, so if there is economic advantage for both sellers and uh, buyers, like in case of, for example, Airbnb or, or Uber, uh, this is uh, this is a place where, where marketplace has a big potential to make it, right? So yes, if there is substantially bigger mm, economic advantage to supply side than for the demand side or the other way around, there is this imbalance uh, on, on the marketplace. So uh, hopefully, uh, guys, you are somewhere there around this sweet spot of making it uh, commercially attractive for both suppliers and uh, and buyers, uh, because this is where this is where the, the magic happens. Let's let's say. And and referring to what you uh, uh, Oscar said about onboarding enterprises or onboarding onboarding companies who can then. Mm, use your uh, marketplace platform to kind of let their employees be flexible where where they want to book the working spaces and not to be tied to you know one single location as you know this thing becomes yeah hopefully uh, old school now uh, but uh, so I, I, I just correct me if I'm wrong but I, I, the way I, I used to call it is this B two B two C marketplace kind of model, right? So there are, there are companies, uh, uh, but also there are individuals who can uh, buy a service, buy a product over the marketplace. So uh, just uh, my comment, and I hope I'm, well, let's say, well informed in terms of how the marketplace is operate. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So like for us, we began with basically targeting consumers, uh, which is in our case, mostly freelancers who are used to like paying for their own expenses. 
but as an employee, even if they you get like they tell you that in two days a week you can work remotely, you're not going to pay for your own <laughs> workspace, right? So we have now created this product where you can kind of give your employees these work remote work days. They can book it through us. But that's also a bit interesting because for them, they don't really see our service as a marketplace. Like for them, it's a, it's a service where they are not like putting in their own money and they are just going there, see what is available for my company. Okay, I can go here. So uh, yeah, <laughs> it is definitely a marketplace, but for these users, they, I don't think they necessarily will see it as such really. Okay. Uh, yes, I remember when I was also planning this webinar and I was trying to briefly tease and, and introduce uh, the people that I'm going to, uh, to run a webinar about marketplaces. I got also questions, uh, sort of name what the what the marketplace is because it's it's such a you know huge word and it's such a spacious that with marketplace you can pretty much uh, name a bunch of various of, of, of products, but I was strictly relating to platforms where there is this supply and demand uh, problem. And this is how I understand marketplaces primarily. So all the guys who were asking me what this will be about, this is, this is, uh, this is it. Uh, and I just see here a, a very quick relation because I just see here a del Delivery Hero uh, logo. Uh, so in my first episode, this was, this was actually more like post COVID uh, related webinar, but Bastian, uh, still back then uh, from Deliver Hero was my speaker. Uh, also, uh, Mindaugas from Vented, the head of engineering videos, I'm sure uh, knows, uh, was my speaker as well back then. So if you are also interested in kind of hearing more from engineering leaders from well-established uh, marketplace scale-ups, then I refer you back to the first episode. Uh, and uh, moving on, I believe so, if that would be uh, this short intro for the question number one, uh, we would move on to uh, question number two. And just for you guys to, uh, for the sake of uh, Q&A session, you may ask the questions that are just, you know, on your mind, or if you have questions related to anything specific that we have covered here during the uh, question round or anything specific to Vilius or Oscar, uh, please uh, state it that way. So we will know if the questions are just open questions for volunteers or to specific speakers. So let's move on to question number two. And this is about uh, technical do's and don'ts in developing both sell side and buy side of the platform. Um, so we will start here from uh, from Oscar. Again, I'm using a very nice graphic from uh, from my uh, favorite Market One Capital. So thanks guys for this. Uh, mm, so this is uh, a little graphic of marketplace managing the supply uh, and demand uh, part with the problem of high loyalty between the suppliers and the buyers, but either of product or service uh, that are supposed to be purchased via the marketplace and the risk of bypassing. So if the marketplace is dealing with the services or products that has this high loyalty, there is also a high risk of bypassing the marketplace. And uh, this is just an inspiration for this uh, second question, but. I am passing the mic to ask to Oscar. Uh, so let's start from those do's and don'ts, actually, from your experience. Uh, yeah, interesting. So relating directly to your slide here with uh, like <laughs> this uh, loyalty and with bypassing the marketplace, that is definitely always a risk. And I like for us, it might even be. Uh, 
like it, it might also be why some of our suppliers choose to be on the platform that they see it not as like this permanent sales channel, but more as a way of acquiring new customers. Uh, but in reality, like no one, no one can offer what the marketplace can offer. So uh, like the biggest co-working player in Stockholm, for example, might have five locations, which is fine. Like if, if you have one of those close to where you live and one in the city center, that is perfect for you. And you might go with that solution. But uh, like it comes down to this network effect that the more supply you have on your platform, the more attractive it is for the buyer to go there because they know they can find anything. Like whatever my need is for the day, I can find it on this platform that gathers all this fragmented uh, supply in one place. And I think that is what builds loyalty in the long end. But in the short term, we also decided early that we will handle all the payments. So uh, you pay everything on our platform and th then we, of course, pay out this to our uh, partners. But to be in control of this transaction, I think is also very valuable. It makes it a bit more sticky that you have saved your payment methods with us and which makes it really easy to go in and use it again uh, for, for the consumer. Uh, other things I've been thinking about when we were speaking with do's and don'ts uh, on the technical side is that uh, we're working, as I said, with a quite small team. We are three developers who are working full time for the company, uh, me included. Uh, and uh, then when I have a team of developers, like an, an offshoring firm where I send some projects. And for me, it's been really important to keep control of the code always. Like, I get these batches of code delivered, but uh, I need to fully understand how everything works. Because in the end, when something goes wrong, it will be me and the, the, maybe the other two developers in-house who will be sitting on the weekend and trying to figure out and fix everything. So it's been really important to like keep control of the whole project uh, and really try to read in how every solution is made, even if I'm not being the one designing everything. Uh, we've also had control of, of the design and doing a lot of work with the UI UX before starting the implementation. And I think that that has really started to pay off. It's been a bit difficult for, to set up this whole structure in the beginning, but I think we're in a good place now. Uh, and we've also been, <laughs> And been using a lot of like ready-made tools. If we're a small team, we can't build everything from, from, from scratch. So we're using like every everything we can find and puzzling it together. And I think this is building up a bit of a technical depth, perhaps, that we we might sometime in the future need to say that okay, we came this far with the solution, but now we need to do it from scratch. And yeah, that's just something we will have to deal with by then. But right now, for us, it, the speed is so important. And especially since this, uh, like this niche that we are in, a lot of people have discovered it during this recent surge of demand of flexible workspaces. So we're not alone anymore. Like we have maybe a few months of head start, but we're not alone anymore. <laughs> so speed is really important for us. Uh, yeah, and other like mistakes maybe we've made is to, as I said, we're trying to take control of thinking everything through in like design tools, like we're using Figma now and really trying to think everything through there. So we have changed uh, once or twice kind of what information we want to gather from our suppliers, like uh, the filters for the search page and uh, what inputs we give them and that means that we basically have had to go through and update all the listings as well and uh, for us this has been a manual task like had, had we thousands of listings we would obviously automate this but uh, like getting this structure 
down from the beginning you would definitely have <laughs> spared us a lot of manual uh, yeah typing and the copy pasting and the, all of that but at the same time you will never know from the beginning exactly what what you should have so we have been talking to users like we launching our features then talking to users get, getting as much insight as we can like what were you missing and they are saying like oh yeah i would like to be able to sort on this and if it's a good idea yeah then we will make it and perhaps that will cause like <laughs> issues of course with that data not being available and then then you need to ask your uh, supply side that uh, this info seems really important like people want to know this can you please update your listings and uh, yeah but definitely really think about what kind of info you need from the beginning and yeah So uh, over to videos, uh, I reckon, and I will add a few points uh, afterwards uh, relating to, to what we have just uh, heard from Oscar. Okay, uh, it's very interesting to hear this like a beginning of the marketplace, how it's uh, how it's going, and uh, yeah. So uh, what I like noted, like uh, from what you said, the the keep control and uh, uh, reuse everything. So I think I agree that. Um, having control is is very important because like uh, you still uh, a small team and you need to know everything and uh, how 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 it's going to be in the future so and regarding the reusability i think it's somewhere in the list of the mistakes we done so uh, i would say like we should reuse or uh, what and you probably should uh, try to use uh, services and uh, everything what's not very important to you from third party like services uh, libraries, but it's also like uh, it could be it could backfire later. Let's say uh, for in our case we kind of relied on uh, multiple libraries solving only one problem so. Uh, I think during the first years, it was like, okay, we have like too many of them and it's it's becoming too hard to control dependencies. It's it's hard to upgrade. And also we see that uh, two libraries are doing the, pretty the same thing, but one so, so, so something was introduced by third party company. So it, it kind of relates to that you need to keep control of that uh, yeah and uh, what else I maybe from do some dance perspective I would um, split that uh, two sections like uh, the team is very important so uh, at the beginning uh, you need as, as you need to do supply demand do manual operations so it's it's very important to have engineers who are generalists and love product so they could uh, do anything needed and they 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 have a product knowledge instead of like okay let's hire uh, five uh, technical guys who can solve any problem but it, it will be too, too hard to manage them and it, it and the product won't move as fast as you want and as Oscar said the speed is very important especially if you have uh, um, competitors chasing you and the flexibility as well so you need to adapt quickly uh, so and from the tech side uh, I think uh, we'll touch that in the next slide but uh, it depends on the what kind of marketplace you're building but for us it was uh, search and uh, flexibility to the most important thing so from the search perspective uh, we had uh, um, we onboarded uh, tons of uh, designers with uh, products and since we and need to uh, we had to like keep that uh, 
side growing it sometimes it's a mess in the metadata about the products in the marketplace and uh, after let's say uh, three years then demand is coming we let's say we have enough supply but it's hard to uh, do the match for the demand and supply side because like uh, we have a lot of data but uh, it's search searchable but it's hard to uh, make that match so I think we invested a lot into the search. Uh, we ended up building uh, in-house algorithms and it was like a deep dive to like uh, um, to, to this topic actually, to the, to the search and how we can improve because like uh, when you have a big enough supply and demand and you see that changing search improves conversion, so you know that okay we have everything now we need to scale and inc increase this like uh, quality of this um, algorithms uh, yeah and um, it's a cheat sheet about the loyalty and uh, bypassing uh, uh, the marketplace so uh, we we had payments from the beginning uh, but of course uh, uh, the risk was real for the bypassing because like if you can go around the marketplace you probably uh, get better uh, better royalties uh, because you don't need to pay fees and so on it's it's sometimes it's, it's beneficial for the um for the buyers but for the suppliers especially so we we invested also to this like increasing the loyalty and uh dealing with uh, uh attempts to bypass uh, marketplace, but I think the, uh, it's like like carrot and the stick. So uh, we worked on the both sides. We actually invested a lot into like um, super, super uh, great um, conditions for the seller. So they don't need to bypass a uh, try, you know, when you have inbox, you can send the, a PayPal link to the buyer and say, hey, I, I, I can give you much better <laughs> discount. So um, what else? Um, regarding uh, technical dons, I think uh, um, if you creating the marketplace, uh, you, you kind of hoping that it will grow, it will grow to, to, to the high number. So, uh, uh, infrastructure is very important and it's also was a mistake we did so we had to migrate uh, not twice but we had to mi migrate infrastructure so since uh, th there are things you need to be flexible and at the same time there are things you need to just prepare for scaling because you know that 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 part is is backbone of the system so it's uh, everything about balancing i guess um I don't know. Maybe that's it for this topic from my side. So I I would just add that um, maybe I will I will move it on to the third question a bit, but I would be happy to hear how do you keep control once you have forty people headcount, uh, product engineering team shipping uh, on the features. So uh, based I mean based on what Oscar said that you know. When the team is small and the delivery team is small, you need to keep control, right? From the very beginning. But then how do you keep control once your team becomes 40 people team, then it becomes I don't know, 100 people team. So I would be happy to hear uh, how did you do that? How do, how do you do it? Uh, I would be also happy to hear your, because the, the next one I would just tease, uh, it's more about the tech stack choices. choices. And since uh, we have, values maybe talking a bit more about the custom build so i would be happy to know about your journey with this yeah data science right so the the search data science and uh, how did did you guys uh came to this idea uh, and how it actually was maybe implemented from this uh, technical perspective uh so i would be uh, happy to to hear so i'm just teasing questions right now uh, and also a, a short note to this uh, little graphic here. So uh, Booksy is, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Booksy. I mean, I'm not uh, booking my uh, hairdresser 
any other way since Booksy uh, became popular here. I mean, they are they are Polish based, right? So I'm not sure if they are in uh, Lithuania and stock uh, and in Sweden. Uh, yeah, but Booksy is big, um, and uh, they and they are also big in in, in the US. Uh, uh, but they solve the problem of uh, booking your beauty services via the platform, and that's their core business. They started from, from beauty, then they moved to uh, booking various services. So now, for example, they have deals with a couple of banks in Poland. So you can actually book a visit to your bank with a service agent via Booksy. So you are going there at the specific day, day and hour, knowing which agent you will talk to. Uh, so they cut this problem of, you know, waiting uh, in the bank, especially, you know, if you have some big paperwork to do. Uh, so I was kind of surprised that they, you know, went out from this, yeah, beauty business uh, sandbox, which was their, their, their starting point. Uh, and referring to that, in my last episode, which was about SaaS businesses, uh, one of my speakers was uh, John from Forest Salon Software. So the guys, the guys are from Ireland. They are also pretty big scale up right now, for sure, over uh, 200 people. They are also built with Ruby and Ember.js, if I'm, if I'm mistaken. And, uh, but they are more on top of those, let's say, classic booking services because they have sort of all in CRM for, for uh, beauty salons. So it's uh, SaaS based, SaaS powered. So the salons are kind of buying a software which is addressing all their possible needs that they can have in the salon. So booking, payments, managing uh, the, their database. So they also have uh, you know tools for um, emailing, messaging uh, the clients, so all in, all in, all in solution, uh, but it's 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 it's, it's SaaS based. Uh, um, so if that is somehow your cup of tea, I'm again referring to my second episode uh, to, to to watch it. Uh, and uh, I would be taking it from here to the second, uh, actually third question, and just relating to speed. Uh, you, you guys said about speed. Uh, and I said about the investors at the beginning. So speed is also especially important once you have limited cash, right? So if you have uh, small resources, you need to be fast and furious. Uh, so then speed is is, is the key. And uh, having said that, I'm moving to a third question, uh, which we are going to start from uh, from Vilius. So tech stack choices and tips for wannabe marketplace founders, also those non-technical. And I will relate to that because, uh, you know, once in a while I get uh, questions and uh, contacts from founders who has who have an idea to start their marketplace business, but they, they are not yet aware what it takes to build uh, the successful marketplace. And I kind of want to address this topic um, so again, next time when they contact me, I will refer them to this webinar and uh, we will have two perspectives. So what it takes to be to, to build a custom built marketplace. So how much effort, energy, resources it takes versus uh, using the available uh, ready platforms, solutions, frameworks, uh, which are out there on the market. Uh, so this will be uh, to Oscar. I will not tease anymore, but this will be to Oscar, and I will add on top of that a few points. So let's start from uh, Vilios and I will uh, Okay, I'll start with uh, that we built everything from scratch. Uh, so, but uh, I, in my opinion, I think uh, if there there is some tool which uh, or library or built-in solution you, you could use and it fits your needs uh, i would definitely start with that because like uh in the beginning you have uh, as a, it's always chicken egg problem so you have to deal with uh more like business and custom features than the key ones like uh, 
like just getting uh, like listing the products or uh, implementing the checkout. So uh, I probably would go with Spree or s some open source solution who could, uh, which could help to, uh, to have that initial and scalable technical aspects, but at the same time you can build on top or with your unique features. So, because like, uh, and it can, reminds me of the mistakes and I, when I uh, told you about like a scalability and the performance issue. So uh, I think that, for example, Spree platform uh, solved, solved that problem. So instead of like dealing with uh, performance issues, you just could uh, integrate the Spree and build on top. So uh, I'll probably go with uh, uh, some built-in solution for the start and then if it it's kind of stops for from stops you growing then you can switch in the future so and uh, i also forgot to mention in the last section for do's and don't so uh when you do flexible solutions uh we you need to do a lot of testing so uh, and it was like the the path we went uh, before testing and then with our regression testing. So it, it helps to change, like, for example, you have end-to-end -end tests uh, covering the supply side, demand side, and uh, in the transactional side. So you could change internals and it doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt that much. Uh, so um, what else? So, um, yeah, um, I don't know if that, it, of course, it includes the infrastructure. So choosing the scalable infrastructure, um, scalable built-in solution, if you could use one, is it would be probably the uh, the best choice for the beginning. And then if, if you get attraction and, and you see that you have to fight the system you have, so it's probably time to rewrite or, or use something else. But for the beginning, it's it's... It's good, so I would be interested, uh, uh, Oscar. What 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 kind of the solution you have in your company? Virius, would you also uh, mind uh, walking us through, like very quickly on the helicopter view, what tech stack you guys are working with uh, mm -hmm. in, in City Trader? Of course, I know, but uh, just yeah, for different people to 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 have the idea. Yeah, so uh, we use AWS services a lot, uh, and um, it's uh, like from the framework side is Ruby on Rails. Uh, we have uh, in the front end we it's it started uh, years ago this project. So we there are a lot there was uh, like multiple times of rewriting stuff in the front end because like. Uh, the technologies are changing rapidly, but uh, let's say to sum up, the tech stack is AWS, uh, MySQL, Rails, uh, REST API, and React. Okay, so uh, uh, let's uh, give the mic to Oscar, which will have this perspective that I'm curious about because this is what I'm kind of trying to suggest to those yeah. good, good, good founders, you know? So you are the real life example that this is a good way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so actually uh, we began with a quite bad way, but you know, sometimes you want to have a really basic MVP up within a week. So we, we began with WordPress and uh, that was not a real marketplace in any way. We handled everything, it was more like a web shop. And it was really slow. Some like we still got some good feedback that this looks quite good, but in reality, it was uh, it was not good. <laughs> and then, of course, we knew we had to build the real marketplace. And I started to look into tools and evaluate things. And we ended up with Share Tribe. And the Share Tribe has two products. One which is I don't know what they call it, but one which is basically QB based, where you on their website, upload your logos, make your colors and maintain everything. And one is called Share Tribe Flex, where you 
kind of use their backend, but you build your own front end. And they also have a template uh, built in React uh, for the front end. So we decided to go with that. Uh, so basically how it works for me is that uh, I have not set up any like database really for maintaining our data. I will, I will use using shared tribe. And then we have an, yeah, we just have an API, a JavaScript SDK, where we just request data or update data uh, to the backend. And I would say that this did save us a lot of time in the beginning because we're doing uh, time-based bookings. So for a meeting room, we, for example, we need to keep track of all the availability, like the opening hours and then what times it is booked and stuff like that. And for co-working, there can be a number of seats and like the available, whole availability <laughs> issue. Uh, I did not really have to bother with. Uh, so I would say we saved probably a few months of developing time with going with this. But as you were as you were referring to a bit, sometimes you kind of hit, hit the roof, the ceiling of what what the system is capable of. And I would definitely say that we are basically there as well already. So I think we can go with this system for quite a long time, but we do need to extend it. So for example, we wanted to add a blog. And for that, we just went with a headless CMS. So we went with Scrappy. And for that, we set up our own SQL database to have just blog posts and SEO pages and stuff like that. And then for uh, right now, when we're building this business-to-business -business, uh, add-on to our site, we needed some extra dynamic data. So we actually set up an AWS Dynamo database uh, to, to handle that. And we're also hosting on AWS. And uh, so uh, you, the shared cloud project, you can host it anywhere you want. But uh, as developers, me and my colleagues, we are basically only doing front-end uh, still. Uh, and I, I think so far I'm happy with it, but uh, I'm also a bit wary. Like, will will it come a time when I feel that uh, we now now we need to do it ourselves? And perhaps, but uh, hopefully not for uh, another two years or so. <laughs> So I will, I will just add uh, a few points here because uh, uh, ShareTribe is uh, also a platform built with Ruby on Rails, which is uh, especially close to, to, to our heart uh, at Dakotas. And uh, I was actually trying to, uh, I mentioned, I was trying to uh, invite uh, Oli, who was uh, a co-founder and CTO of, of ShareTribe, uh, but uh, we didn't make it. So Oli, once you will always uh, watch this webinar. I'm just hey, saying hi, and uh, I'm making you guys a free product placement. Um, so mm, I am mm, being rich. Yeah, I'm being contacted once in a while by founders who want to start their uh, marketplace journey. And uh, they are looking for a way to put their idea together and just ship it to the market. Yeah, so uh, of course, you know, usually we, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what it, what you, what you want to get, what you want to achieve, and uh, uh, are you really aware how much it takes to build something from scratch, right? So this is not like a you know walk in the park, and uh, maybe it's not what you need right now. That maybe you need okay, okay, this is still your you know MVP idea, but maybe you don't need to over engineer at the very beginning especially if you are bootstrapping your project uh, and uh, you are not backed uh, by some wealthy VC uh, right from the start. So usually we are trying to kind of suggest, hey guys, you know, maybe look elsewhere, maybe just check the shared drive. Uh, the other uh, solution I know uh, is, is Arcadia. Uh, the guys are based in Singapore slash Australia, so more you know, Asia Pacific region. Uh, but overall, they also have uh, a good solution to 
uh, to let you start. Yeah, so to so let you start quicker and uh, uh, kind of maybe yeah satisfy your hunger to you know make your baby happen, right? Because this is kind of your baby, this idea phase, and you want to let's call it push it to production, right? So you want to see it on production, uh, and at the beginning you don't really. I mean, maybe you shouldn't really care if this is custom built or this is, you know, somehow backed up by a ready solution, if that's enough. So this baby will be alive. Uh, and uh, as uh, Oscar said, you know, for some time, it's enough for you to, to use the solution. And I'm also kind of suggesting to, uh, to those uh, founders that, okay, custom build is of course, different story you have the full control full product ownership uh you know total influence on how it looks that's cool but it takes more uh time money etc uh but uh ready solutions are good uh, for the start so of course there will be some limitation but you might uh, reach this ceiling in in a year or in a two so within those one or two, two three let's say one to two years, let's call it, you have time to actually test the market and test the product market feed and test the supply demand uh, part. So you have, you are kind of buying yourself time to experiment, to check, to make sure that your idea actually has, has a chance to fly. Uh, and then the uh, third mm, uh, thing that already uh, Vilius mentioned, I will refer back to that. So spree, is also, guys, I'm making you a free product placement. Uh, this is a, an open source framework currently uh, maintained primarily by another uh, Poland-based software house. Uh, and the, the cool thing about it is that Pack Help, who, who has actually won this Deloitte Fast City ranking last year, is, is built on Spree. So, uh, so the guys are also using the the, the, the spree commerce uh, framework, but of course they are yeah building on top of that, uh, and this is the way they started. It's also uh, built with, with, with Ruby on Rails. So of course you need to have the Ruby on Rails skills to you know you know develop it right. But again, there are plenty of uh, ready components, blocks, features that you will you you will use and you will need. But you don't need to reinvent the wheel and start from scratch because uh, this is available. So, just uh, guys, I'm just kind of making a, 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 a referral. You don't need to custom build from the very beginning, especially when your resources are limited and if you would like to ship fast. So, this is uh, my uh, summary of, of that here. Um, if you would like to add something on top, please do, uh, either Vilius or uh, Oscar. And uh, for the participants, we are gently moving to Q&A session and we have exactly those 12 minutes that I want uh, for the Q&A session. So we are right on time, uh, which is cool. Uh, so I will just move the slide to my last meme. Uh, and I will just make one comment. So if we are here in the uh, being a, a bulletproof uh, context, so I'll make a that joke uh, that Facebook engineering team was definitely not bulletproof this week. Uh, so uh, I hope we all here and you guys here will maybe also have a chance to learn something from this whole uh, Facebook mess. Uh, I mean, there are already a uh, lot of resources uh, on the internet, you know, what was the cause of it? Actually, I, I read one on, on Cloudflare blog, which I, I, I recommend. I can also put it somewhere in the, in the resources. Uh, but yeah, so we have now, now time for, for the Q&A, guys. Uh, if you would like to ask uh, some questions related to what we have discussed, please, uh, use the chat uh, module here on Zoom. And if you are watching on, on LinkedIn, please also use the uh, 
LinkedIn chat and my colleague will post uh, uh, the questions here. Um, so before we get something from the participants, I will get back to one question uh, I was trying to, to ask Vilius about your uh, journey with, um, with this search, right? And, and the data, data science, and data engineering. So yeah. I, I remember you guys, you were, you were doing, uh, of course, if I'm not mistaken with Python. Uh, so I guess you, you built some data science team here. No, no. Uh, it's uh, we we use uh, the primary like main services. Uh, it, search is built on Elasticsearch, of course. So uh, we were kind of migrating from one um, from one client uh, like library cl client for the Elasticsearch to the another, and uh, then we saw okay uh, the problem we had was uh, relevancy. So uh, when you search something. For nine gag is a good example. Uh, tags are terrible, so if you search something, you just can't find. It, it doesn't matter how many keywords you type into the search. So, in our case, it wasn't so bad, but we needed to, to somehow score and uh, increase the relevancy of the search. Uh, it probably it would be matching for the Oscar, but uh, so we. We basically built custom scoring on data we had and the data needed we start collecting and based on that we uh, we used Elasticsearch uh, API which was simple just for the sorting and for the relevancy but it wasn't enough so we kind of start building uh, custom tracing what's what's what are products that uh, uh, which products uh, matches the certain keyword the best and then we somehow incorporated that knowledge into the search results so it's it's uh, probably too hard to explain or it's uh, it, it would require uh, one more session but uh, we're basically trying to and we succeeded building some like uh, community influence uh, search results so yeah the more uh, the more users we have uh, let's say the the more relevant search results will be and it's it's kind of scalable okay uh, so i will have uh, one more question that came to my mind uh, during uh, while we discuss this loyalty thing uh, so you uh, said about the payment system that is integrated into into your platform so the payments go via cg trader not somewhere around uh, and uh, my first question would be uh, which payment system are you using and the second uh, question uh, or maybe not a question but a note so i remember when Vinted, I mean, Vinted is now huge in, in Poland, and I know it from the uh, experience because my wife is just using it like crazy and making me actually send those parcels, right? So Vinted is huge, uh, and uh, they used, but a while ago, they didn't have this payment system uh, integrated inside. So the payment was done somehow around, and the same thing was with the with their competitors so there's a, a, a olx group it's uh, part of the yeah allegria or kind of so, allegro group so allegro is our giant unicorn marketplace uh, from poland uh, it is on uh, a few of the different markets under different brand names but allegro also owns the OLX, olx group and olx used to be the primary destination when it comes to those local classifieds. so you can buy uh used you buy and sell used stuff via this uh, OLX platform. And once the vintage came, with just this, you know, very niche uh, idea of focusing on fashion, just on clothes, it wiped out any clothes, uh, almost any uh, used clothes sales on this OLX platform. And the vintage actually did it. I would, I would say maybe. Uh, one of the reasons, but primarily for me as, as, as a user, or maybe my wife was a user, that 
all the payments were done via the platform. All the couriers and uh, deliveries were done by the platform, like automatically. And the old school or all X way was that you just agreed between the buyer and the seller and you, you arrange everything manually. So you were supposed to get the payment from the uh, buyer. You were supposed to arrange the delivery, uh, sending out the parcel. Uh, and it was not as convenient as Vinted did. Vinted came and they just had all in one solution, saving you know a few problems at the same time and saving a lot of time for the users. So that's kind of kind of a disruption. I would uh, uh, I would praise, and uh, they are just I mean they are not stopping. Yeah, so they they are just really really huge here. Uh, so yeah. Uh, now I forgot what, what question I asked. Yeah, so so uh, regarding the payment system, so oh, yeah. we, we started uh, from the beginning with an integrated one because like uh, when you deal with that supply demand problem, you, and as, as Oscar said, the, the customers are also the key component. So you you need to create a good user experience for the, for the buyers. So it was... Uh, payment system from the beginning and I think we're currently using the ADNS uh, platform uh, but anyway so um, yeah that's that's important uh, I, I know some marketplaces and or the businesses who is trying to do it like manually and uh, as you mentioned that example with uh, uh, the, 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 for the use stuff so it's it's not scalable if you need to arrange everything manually so yeah yeah so uh, th th that that was a cool thing because allegro and oil leaks you know they they are huge right and they they've been here for ages uh, so they had this advantage of a big player well established player and suddenly vinted came in and they just kind of you know wipe them out right wipe them out with, with with very very big disruption which is of course beneficial for, for the users so, so which is having a competition is always always good for the, for the end user right so now uh, i will hit uh, the uh, question from from the uh, i'm not sure guys if you are seeing it but i will read it out loud so how to keep early stage tech choices choices flexible enough so they can pivot and robust enough so it doesn't impact launching of the product and this is an open question, so any of you, please volunteer. Yeah, I can start with like yeah, how, how I'm making the choices, and it's uh, it's always also balanced because I don't feel like I can spend weeks on evaluating different products. So uh, a lot of the time, it's kind of a popularity contest, to be honest. Like go with tools that are uh, like recognized as a standard. And, uh, and most often they are also stable and are maintained. Uh, like you can find sometimes an open source project that is free, it, it, like an alternative to something you're considering buying. And sometimes I'm just like, it might be worth these euros to, to have a tool that you can know that is maintained. Uh, yeah, so I, I would say that is, more or less how how I do it and also choose tools where you own the data. There are some like as I'm be saying I'm using kind of a backend as a service, you know, I'm not setting up my own database, but I do have access to all the data. I have, I can export that data and then I can migrate to something else if I need to. But there are also more closed off tools which are difficult to migrate from and I would stay away. <laughs> I'm not sure if you have uh, some comments. Maybe even I can pick up some tips. Yeah, uh, I could add that. Uh, I think the technology or the those choices are important, but uh, I would say that the, the way you ship code and the product is even more important. So I would suggest like uh, just start with small and do continuous deployment and, and test product live 
So you will see very early that the technology was not good enough, or maybe you made made a mistake instead of like building, 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 and then shipping the product. So probably the like uh, um, the process uh, could help more. And and from the technical side, you uh, like if you test everything. So even the wrong decisions could be replaced on the ground. But of course, that's also. <laughs> Not, not so easy, but doable. Yeah, so uh, I, I also a quick comment, I think, from one of the uh, yeah, last webinar, I think I was hosting. There was, a, there was a question about, you know, starting. So if you're, if you, if you were starting, I mean, it was about salsa, but, you know, any project. And the, what text, tech stack to choose, right? So I think the, the guys over there were, were pretty, uh, they have a pretty common view that founders usually start with something they know themselves if they are technical founders. So uh, they, they they know some language uh, uh, and this is the usual way why also hiring the first engineers into the project. It's also common that if you are a founder and you are starting your own venture, you are looking for engineers you already know and you work with and you kind of had the relation, you know what to expect and you know that they will be an asset in your team from, from the very beginning when you have this need of being, yeah, ruthless, yeah? So you need to be fast and, and furious and, and, and kind of make as, as, as few mistakes as possible, right? In order not to screw up, right? So, so you, you have the chances to, to fly uh, with the product in the, wrong, in the long run. So just a, a quick uh, mark from, from me. And we are three minutes, yeah, three minutes or two minutes after the time. So if you still have some uh, questions, guys, uh, we can carry on for three more minutes. Uh, if not, I will be summarizing it uh, briefly uh, saying that of course as always i'm very very uh, grateful for your for your time guys uh, the speakers and the uh, participants so i hope the, the content we have actually produced here is valuable and insightful and you'll have uh, something for you here uh, me myself i'm pledging I made a pledge that I will organize one more episode still this year. So I'm planning to uh, to hit with the uh, FinTech episode, I believe somewhere beginning of, of December. So I will definitely uh, keep you posted uh, about it. Um, and after this uh, episode, of course, as always, I will uh, summarize it uh, nicely. Uh, we will put some highlights and put it together into the uh, the blog post, you will also receive the, the full recording uh, that we will upload to, to YouTube. Uh, I will share the slides also, as I mentioned, uh, with the resources, uh, you know, with the, the research uh, that I have mentioned here today. So uh, in case you are interested, you can uh, dive deeper. Uh, and that would be uh, all for myself. Um, I just hand over uh, the um, Mike Stovilius and Oscar, and again, thanks uh, guys for, for for your time and, and contribution. Uh, my humble opinion, it 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 was rock solid. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Uh, really nice talking to you guys. Um, thank you. Thanks, guys. So I'm closing it down. I wish you great. Uh, oh. Uh, rest of the week and see you around. Cheers. <laughs>